from WSLS. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. A winter weather alert, rain turning into ice overnight, creating some dangerous driving conditions for some of you this morning. We're working for you, bringing you the very latest on road conditions where you live before you head out. Plus, former President Trump's defense team begins their arguments today. Their plan of attack and when we could see a vote. Good morning and happy Friday to you, finally. We thank you for waking up with us this morning. I'm Patrick McKee alongside Jenna Zipton and Rachel Lucas. We are tracking ice on some roads. Some roads already closed, including U.S. 60 in Amherst County. Schools and businesses delayed this morning. Those scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And, of course, you can always find them on WSLS.com. We're working for you with live team coverage this morning, and we want to begin with meteorologist Chris Michaels. Hey there, guys. Good morning to you. So the good news is the more substantial precipitation, more widespread stuff starting to move out of the area, though you still see some returns there. Some of the purple indicating a little bit of sleet, freezing rain in parts of south side. Radar isn't going to catch on to drizzle, but we are seeing that in parts of the area. So in the yellow, for most of us, seeing some icy patches. In the red is where VDOT's are reporting some more significant issues. Issues, parts of Pulaski County into the Highlands where we'll hear from Taj Simmons here in just a little bit and also into parts of Nelson County. Temperatures aren't going to rise all that much today and again I do think we see some pockets of drizzle or some freezing drizzle that could make things a little slick especially on sidewalks and things of that nature that being the case through the afternoon. Then comes tomorrow that's part two to our wintry kind of marathon here and you got a winter weather advisory in effect for most of the area where we could see some light ice accumulation tomorrow but a winter storm warning toward Lynchburg and surrounding counties. That's where we could see a little more ice as we go through the day tomorrow. The latest timing totals and impacts coming up throughout the next hour. Our live team coverage continues this morning with 10 News reporter Taj Simmons. He's live in our storm chaser in Lexington. Taj, how are the roads looking there? Well, we've taken the interstates all the way up from Roanoke to Lexington and there's a lot more snow than there was in Roanoke. When we left Roanoke, it was mainly just water and ice and those type of conditions. But up here around Buena Vista, Lexington, there's a little bit of snow on the margins. We're going to take you out and have you see what it looks like right now. This is Route 60 uh, between Buena Vista and Lexington. Uh, we saw a lot of cars out here that were not only covered in ice, but covered in snow, uh, making that drive between, um, you know, up and around Rockbridge County. And the reason why we're on the route as opposed to on the interstate is that VDOT crews have done a really good job so far of keeping the interstate clear. Obviously, it's still hazardous, but it's um, a lot more clear because there are so many cars that are driving through it and they know the hazards. As opposed to right here in Route 60, there's a lot of stuff on the margins that, you know, you see has piled up. Um, I don't want to say how much. It's uh, really not my authority to say, but it is very notable winter weather here. Uh, there is still a little bit of precipitation coming down, as you can tell by the windshield wipers. Not as much as before, but there is still quite a bit. And of course, the temperature is uh, still below freezing up here. So whatever does come down is very much at risk of freezing. Now, as we said before, we're going to keep on driving, show you what it looks like all around Rockbridge, all the way up into the Highlands. So be sure to stay tuned to see what it looks like and know what to look out for. For now, we're going live in Lexington. Taj Simmons, 10 News working for you. We're continuing to track road conditions all over the region. Here's a live look along Interstate 81 in Christiansburg, where it looks like you have some kind of stopped tractor trailer there on the side. Uh, we have seen some uh, rain conditions, and it looks like it is frozen right now. So um, keep uh, give yourself plenty of extra time this morning. The COVID second dose vaccine clinic for this morning at the Franklin Center in Rocky Mount is delayed due to the weather. We're working to get you more information about these throughout the day. Instead of starting at 9 this morning, it will start at 10 a.m. Be the first to know about changes to the weather and winter weather. Download the WSLS 10 weather app for the most up to date information when we are not on the air. 604 now, it's day four of the historic impeachment trial of former President Trump. House managers finished up their case yesterday. Today, Trump's legal team lays out its case for exonerating the former president of inciting the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. House managers made their final attempt to convince senators that Trump must be held accountable for directing rioters to attack. January 6th was not some 
unexpected radical break from his normal law-abiding and peaceful disposition. This was his state of mind. This was his essential M.O. They described a president who encouraged violence not just on January 6th, but throughout his presidency and refused to condemn it afterwards. Trump's attorneys are expected to call the trial political and will also focus on his right to free speech. That trial continues today at noon. You can watch it live right here on WSLS 10. Now we will come on the air briefly at noon to bring you a quick update on weather conditions. New this morning, a new report from the New York Times reveals former President Trump was sicker with COVID-19 than what was revealed at the time. The article claims Trump had extremely low blood oxygen levels. The Times is basing its information from four people familiar with Trump's condition. The Times article says his oxygen level was so low, staffers thought he would need a ventilator before he was taken to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. According to the Times, after Trump announced he tested positive, White House doctors downplayed his symptoms. As concerns about the new variant continue, a Karelian health expert says more vaccinations will help stop its spread and it could stop new strains from developing. Research shows the UK variant could be about 30 to 40 percent more contagious, but current vaccines are effective in preventing serious illness and hospitalizations. As soon as you have access to a vaccine, whether it's the Moderna or the Pfizer or the J&J &J or one of the others that is likely to be approved, get it, take it, and that will protect you the best and the soonest so we can develop the herd immunity and get out of this pandemic. Researchers say even when you are vaccinated, you need to wear a mask, avoid crowds and social distance. Just hours after CVS opened its vaccination availability yesterday, spots filled up for all nine local locations, some filling up within just minutes. Today, those who did get a spot will begin to get their first doses. In a statement, a CVS spokesperson says once more vaccines are available, they'll open up more appointments. We'll let you know when that happens. Local teachers and school staff will get their second dose of the COVID vaccine later today. 10 News was there when about 2,000 got their first dose at the Berglund Center. We followed the principal of West Salem Elementary School through the process as she got her first dose in under 15 minutes. The final dose is giving people hope. I think we've already put in really good mitigation strategies, but I think it absolutely brings another peace of mind. I think it also just adds to the, the level of optimism that I'm starting to feel moving forward. While many doses were given out, it wasn't enough to cover all teachers in the Roanoke Valley, so they're scheduling other times for them to get the vaccine. The CDC is expected to release its guidelines on the best way to safely reopen more schools today. At this point, it's been a varied approach, sometimes down to the district or even school level, and it continues to be a flashpoint issue around the country. The CDC's guidance on reopening schools is expected to outline five key strategies. Hand washing, masking, social distancing, cleaning and ventilation, as well as contact tracing, isolation, and quarantine. 608 now on what's news today. Rono County schools are closed today for teacher work day. Staff's going to receive their second coronavirus vaccines. Roanoke study committee to reduce gun violence meets today. It was formed to look at current practices to reduce gun violence, review what's being used in other communities and make recommendations to city council. Today's the last day to give your thoughts on housing in Blacksburg. The town says affordable housing has become a major concern. The survey asks about challenges, what's important when choosing a neighborhood and affordability. This is the first of three phases. Feedback will be used to weigh trade offs of potential approaches and guide strategies for growth and housing availability. We have a link to the survey on WSLS.com. The tax filing season begins today. The start was delayed this year because of the pandemic and the agency needed more time to process after the last round of COVID relief. After you file, the typical turnaround time is about three weeks. If you're looking forward to wearing your green and celebrating in the streets of Roanoke this St. Patrick's Day, you might want to put your four leaf clover away, at least for now. Downtown Roanoke Incorporated has not yet made a decision about St. Patrick's Day events this year. They planned a parade last year, but that was canceled just days before due to COVID-19 concerns. Since then, downtown Roanoke's learned a lot about how to plan socially distant events.
We've, um, you know, changed a lot of the things that we've done um, in order to, you know, help our businesses. Obviously, had to make a lot of changes um, and cancellations to events. So I think just adaptability and trying to think on your feet and do whatever you can. Several restaurants still organize outdoor events last year. 610, nothing like Valentine's Day flowers to give to a loved one. The positive impact the pandemic's had for a local florist. Then new at 645 in your Feel Good Friday, we're sharing the special love story between Virginia's longest married couple. Plus, the bitter cold is sweeping across much of the country. How you can protect yourself when it comes to bitter cold temperatures. Yeah, not necessarily bitter cold today, but cold enough. Temperatures actually about 10 degrees below the average this time of year. We're only in the low to mid 30s with drizzle sticking around, so that could still add to some slick spots like what you see here from Chris Manley in Rustburg. Be careful on the deck and on the sidewalks as sleet and freezing rain has frozen over, especially this morning. Your local weather authorities coverage on 10 News is about your family. Know your zone. Five specific areas so you easily spot what's coming your way. Working to watch and always track for you. Your local weather authority on 10 News. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. 614 now. This past year has many Americans focusing more on their mental health than ever before. Research has shown that music can reduce anxiety, blood pressure, and pain, as well as improve sleep quality, mood, and mental alertness. Music triggers dopamine releases in several parts of your brain. Now, to craft your playlist, start with two major purposes, one that will relax you and one that will alert you. Then divvy up the songs into more specific groups like mood boosting, grounding, or focusing. Include some songs from distant memories to engage your mind and activate your habits constantly use your different playlists uh, to balance yourself. Our brains naturally synchronize to the rhythm of the music when we're listening to it. You don't always have to listen to spa music to relax or rock and roll to hype you up. What's important is your individual association with the music in forming habits. What about kids music? I just keep, I keep uh, Disney on quite a bit. <laughs> playing at my house. Coco Melon. <laughs> I have Boom Disney kids. soundtracks going all the time, <laughs> so it works. Disney's for everybody. I love it. It is. Frigid temperatures, ice storms, and heavy snow. States from coast to coast are getting walloped by winter. And with those conditions come cold weather dangers. Extreme cold exposure claims hundreds of lives every year. Children, the elderly, and those experiencing homelessness are especially vulnerable. Health experts say to watch yourself and others for symptoms of hypothermia, like fumbling hands or a stumbling walk. Fingers, toes, and any exposed skin are most at risk for developing frostbite. It's in the minutes, uh, and it can happen uh, much quicker than people anticipate. Your best bet, dress for the weather in layers with wicking fabrics as a base layer and mittens over gloves. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All right, if you were watching over the past two days, you remember all of us saying that all it takes is one degree, a few thousand feet up to change the type of precipitation. This was the weather balloon that was launched yesterday evening in Blacksburg. Everything to the right of this black line is air above freezing. Everything to the left is air below freezing. Look at what happened a few thousand feet up. The air was about one to two degrees above freezing. That's why a lot of us in the New River Valley, in the Roanoke Valley, in Lynchburg, have seen quite a bit of sleet and freezing rain. A lot of that moving out of the area right now, just kind of drizzly as we go through the rest of the day. Temperatures 30 to 35 at the surface. By tonight, we're in the upper 20s and lower 30s. By tomorrow, that sets the stage for more freezing rain and some more rain. Let's start you out 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. You notice things getting closer to the North Carolina Virginia line and then gradually moving from south to north from there. So morning commute is going to be rough, at least in parts of the area. Area. It's going to start out pretty light. This will be light freezing rain, but it doesn't take much to make for some slick spots. You go farther to the west toward I-77 toward Wythen Smith counties and the threat for any kind of significant accumulation goes down. In fact, you notice some slightly warmer air coming up the green. That's your plain rain, especially close to the North Carolina Virginia line around
around the middle of the day, but especially areas closer to the Parkway and really Lynchburg and surrounding counties. That's where the freezing rain is going to hold on at times, even as we head into tomorrow afternoon. So having said that, you look toward Bland, you look toward Withville. I don't think you see much, if any, really ice accumulation. You could see anywhere from a glaze to a tenth of an inch from Roanoke to Christiansburg to parts of Floyd County to Covington, Botetourt and Lexington. But as soon as you go along into the east of the parkway, so areas like Montvale, Bedford, Lynchburg, areas like Rustburg, Appomattox could be looking at a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Isolated higher totals here in central Virginia, whereas Danville areas right along 58 see about a glaze to a tenth of an inch of ice. So what that means for us is yet again, I see roads at times tomorrow. Some of you have been voicing concerns about COVID clinics. We'll have to see what happens with the schedules for that. Power outages are really only possible if you get a quarter of an inch of ice or more. Good news is we're dry for most of Valentine's Day, the exception being the afternoon, maybe a brief mix late Monday and then heading into Tuesday morning as well. Just got to see how much cold air is there at the surface, looking at more rain and a wintry mix as we head through the first half of Tuesday, warmer by the afternoon. So for the Roanoke Valley 30s, that's all we're going to manage today and tomorrow, but improving temperatures as we head into Valentine's Day during the afternoon, we're in the 40s with rain showers moving through. Again, by Monday, we're around 40, could see some rain moving in late in the day, turning over to a wintry mix at times into Tuesday morning. High temperatures then back into the 40s throughout much of next week. Possible, uh, possibly another system coming in by Thursday. And then after that, indications as of right now showing that we actually start to calm things down a little bit as we approach next weekend. Hallelujah. But yeah, right now on the roads, Patrick's going to fill us in on time saver traffic. Not looking too pretty in parts it, of the area. It's really not. Greater Lynchburg, this is a mess here. Uh, going in and out of Lynchburg on 460, Route 29, a lot of slick spots. The yellow, oranges, and reds indicating a lot of slowdowns this morning. Be careful if you have to travel, especially in central Virginia. All right, then a couple of crashes to tell you about. Franklin County, this one we've been following now for uh, the past hour or so. Uh, all north and southbound lanes of Route 122 are closed at Harmony School Road due to a crash there. And also on 81, mile marker 170 in Botetourt County, we've got a tractor trailer crash that has the south right lane in right shoulder. Currently closed this likely due to icy conditions, especially on your bridges and overpasses. You got to watch it and be uh, take it extra slow. If you don't have to go out, best advice, stay at home this morning. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Bumble is going public on the NASDAQ today under the ticker BMBL. The dating app selling 50 million shares at $43 a piece in this IPO, raising more than $2 billion. The company operating two dating apps, Bumble and Badoo, which have more than 40 million active users. And the labor market continuing to struggle to get back on track. First time unemployment claims falling to 793,000 last week. That was worse than expected and still elevated above pre pandemic highs. Continuing claims coming in at 4.5 million compared to the prior week. And Mr. Peanut is teaming up with Spam. Kraft Heinz selling off its nuts business to Hormel Foods for about $3.4 billion in cash. Under the deal, Hormel would own most products sold under the planter's brand, including cheese balls. The deal expected to close sometime during the first half of this year. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Scholler from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Here is a live look in Hillsville along Interstate 77 where traffic seems to be moving just fine. We continue tracking the latest road conditions and what this means for your weekend coming up. Plus in full bloom just in time for Valentine's Day, the positive effect the pandemic has had on one local florist. It's Virginia Today at 6, working for you. While we may be keeping our distance from loved ones, Cupid is sending more gifts by mail than ever before. That's right. UPS is predicting a 30% increase in flower deliveries this Valentine's wow. Day. Georgia's Flowers is celebrating its 40th Valentine's Day in Rona. Quite a milestone. Each year, the shop brings in two large trucks to help deliver flowers across the city. Staff there say the phone's been ringing off the hook for the past couple of weeks. Some customers even placed their order almost a year ago. This year in particular has been, uh, you know, we, we, have, we have some major issues going on. We have COVID, so we have a lot of new protocols uh, in place uh, to keep our employees and our customers safe. 
According to the Society of American Florists, the industry has seen an uptick in demand for fresh flowers and plants during the pandemic. I get that, but I don't care about the flowers. Just give me the box of chocolate that goes with it. Nah, I just want all the things. I want the chocolate. You could add that on. Yeah, I want it all. Big box, <laughs> not the small one, the big one. Yeah. Flowers, chocolates, teddy bears, dinner. Double stuff Oreos. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and you Can had we get to go rid and ruin it with that. Of the ice, Chris. That would be my perfect yeah. Valentine's. That would be, yeah. and mine too. You think I want to be, uh, well, I do want to be here another weekend, maybe. <laughs> not really. Yes, you do. <laughs> I love you guys. Good, good try, good try. I there, like though. sleep too, just a little bit. So, all right, this morning we're starting out with a little bit of ice, sleet, and snow on some of our uh, car windshields. Sidewalks are uh, still pretty slippery out there, so be extra careful. Slick even on some main roads, as Patrick was just telling you about the greater Lynchburg area. Some slowdowns around Bedford as well. Notice some of the pinks uh, showing up here. A little bit of freezing rain, a little bit of sleet, especially as you go from Campbell County southwards. So very spotty in nature, but still adding to some slick spots in Southside. Speaking of Southside, mainly stuck with some drizzle the rest of the day, but freezing rain to start out the morning tomorrow before changing over to a cold rain. We're back in the 40s Sunday and Monday with the possibility of more wintry weather coming in by Tuesday. We'll update you on ice totals for tomorrow. It's coming up in the next half hour. 627, a man escapes from a local psychiatric hospital. Why police say the community was instrumental in bringing him back into custody. The winter weather continues to affect us out here on the roads. I'm Tosh Simmons. I'll give you a look at what I'm seeing from my windshield. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Icy conditions. Most of the region seeing slick roads this morning as rain freezes overnight. We're tracking the very latest and what you need to know before you head out the door. Plus, more than 100 cars involved in this major pileup. What investigators say caused this accident. Good morning and happy Friday to you. We thank you for waking up with us this, this morning. We are tracking lots of winter weather from snow to freezing rain. You may have some problems on the road depending on where you're going. A lot of schools and businesses closed or delayed. Those scrolling at the bottom of your screen and on WSLS.com. We have live team coverage working for you to prepare you before you start your day. Meteorologist Chris Michaels starts us off with what we can expect. Hey there, guys. Good morning. We're starting to get some reports of snow and sleet totals across parts of the area. As we said, the higher totals would be farther to the north. So Sink and Creek, Rockbridge Baths, Warm Springs between about one to three inches. Big Island at about an inch and a quarter of snow and sleet. In Roanoke, especially near the airport, it was reported about half an inch of snow and sleet combined. The bulk of the more widespread precipitation moving out of the area, that's round one. Round two is coming in tomorrow. Winter weather advisory for tomorrow into tomorrow evening. For most of the area, winter storm warning toward Lynch and surrounding counties where we could see higher ice accumulation totals. Again, that's tomorrow. Today, most of what we see is going to be just the overcast and some drizzle left over. In the highlands, though, got some slick spots out there, especially with the snow and sleet combo that you saw overnight. By tomorrow, we'll see the combination of freezing rain and rain. That mainly starting later in the morning and the farther north that you go. We're back into the low to mid 40s by Sunday with rain showers possible later in the day. Team coverage continues this morning with 10 News reporter Taj Simmons. He's in the storm chaser this morning in Rockbridge County. Taj, what are roads looking like there? Well, crews are doing their best to keep the roads clear, but there's only so much you can do when winter weather comes like this. Now, thankfully, we're on I-64 in Rockbridge County, and as I said before, they've done what they could to keep it clear. And it actually looks pretty good from what I'm seeing here. This is what it, this is what it looks like if you are in my spot. But that's not to say that there isn't a hazard. There's obviously, you know, the chance for rain and ice to accumulate, especially as cold as it is now. It's still under freezing. So if anything is coming down, there has been some precipitation coming down this entire time. There's always a chance it could pull up and become ice. In fact, we have seen at least one major incident where a truck has slid off the road. Um, that's on I-81 down on uh, mile marker 170. That is just to the south or excuse me, that's to the north of the cannon. So these hazards are out here and has been affecting travel. Um, we're heading towards uh, Clifton Forge and Covington where there's a lot more snow than there would be in say Rock, um, not Rockbridge, but a lot more snow than there would be in Lexington, uh, Botox County. So the winter hazards are a little bit different for 
every area that we've been through, but the key word is that they still are hazards. And if you don't have to be on the roads, you know, you probably shouldn't be. And if you have to be on the roads, go slow, drive carefully. We've seen signs, you know, constantly on the interstates reminding drivers to stay slow if they're out here. And that's a reminder I have to you as well, because this winter weather is here and it probably won't go anywhere anytime soon. For now, reporting live from Rockbridge County, Tyler Simmons, 10 News working for you. Thank you, Taj. We are tracking these icy road conditions all across our region. We want to give you a live look now at US 460 near Wards Road in Lynchburg. As you can see, a lot of water on and around those roadways. So just take it easy this morning. Keep an eye out for slick spots, especially on bridges, overpasses and entrance and exit ramps. And this is what we don't want to see. This is hard to watch. This massive car pileup in Texas is a reminder icy road conditions can be very dangerous. The violent collision started just before sunrise yesterday with cars spinning and sliding out of control. More than 130 vehicles piled up along Interstate 35 in Fort Worth. Look at that. Crews spent the entire day pulling apart the wreckage and rescuing people pinned inside. At least six people died and dozens were hurt. About a tenth of an inch of ice fell, leading to that pileup. We want to let you know about this crash from early this morning along 220 in Roanoke County. It is cleared now, but take a look. You can see the outline of this truck that overturned. Be sure to drive slow as you head out the door this morning. And be the first to know about winter weather. Download the WSLS 10 weather app for the most up-to-date information when we're not on the air. 635 now, a man who escaped from a local psychiatric hospital is back in custody this morning. Police were looking for this man, 34-year-old James Ray Gregory. They say he jumped from a second floor window at Catawba Hospital in Roanoke County just before 730 last night. Police say Gregory stole a truck and went to someone's home. That person called 911. Especially with the person that called in that he came up to their house and the person reported the vehicle stolen. They were instrumental in us getting them, their people in position and being able to successfully apprehend this individual. Police were able to locate the truck and then use spike strips to stop him and take him back into custody. Police are looking for a man accused of robbing a bank in Southeast Roanoke yesterday afternoon. Take a good look at your screen. This is who police tell us the suspect is. Surveillance video shows him walking into the Carter Bank and Trust on 9th Street just before 2. We're told he demanded money and left before police arrived. No one was hurt. Time now 636 also starting to get some ice reports from the National Weather Service close to a quarter inch Copper Valley, but less than about a tenth of an inch of ice in places like Blacksburg, Lynchburg, Rustburg and Vinton. But as you see, even though that's a small number, it's enough to make things pretty slick out there. But good news is the bulk of the widespread precipitation moving out. Still some patches of freezing rain and sleet, however, moving through parts of Southside in the New River Valley today. We're in the low to mid 30s with patches of drizzle. What's old can always be new again. How Taylor Swift is bringing back some of her greatest hits in brand new form. In your entertainment headlines this morning, Taylor Swift fans are having the best day. Overnight, the pop star released her brand new re-recorded version of her hit Love Story. This is just the beginning for new music. She announced her entire re-recorded Fearless album will hit stores April 9th. The re-recordings follow the sale of Swift's first six albums to investors. The singer vowed to record new versions of her music, versions she would own. Fearless, Taylor's version will feature 26 songs total, including six that have never been released. Britney Spears loses another fight in the legal battle over control of her estate. The singer is trying to remove her father as a co-conservator of the $60 million estate. During a virtual court hearing yesterday, a judge ruled the current arrangement will stay in place. The pop star's legal struggle is under new scrutiny following the New York Times documentary that follows her rise to stardom and the media pressure often blamed her for blamed for her public breakdown in 2007. A new pair of ruby slippers is reportedly set to go down the yellow brick road. New Line Cinema is planning to remake the classic The Wizard of Oz. Variety reports New Line promises the film will take a fresh take on Dorothy and the Land of Oz. 
The Steal the Movie may draw on the classic 1939 musical starring Judy Garland like the prize Ruby Slippers. No casting information has been announced yet. We've got a lot of mixed feelings on this one. Yeah, classic remaking it. I don't know how that's going to go. I'm not sure either. Do love The Wizard of Oz, though. And I wish that we could go to Oz, Chris, because I'm yeah. ready for spring, and this is nonsense. No, <laughs> this is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I couldn't have worded it any better. From mixed feelings to a mixed bag of precipitation, we've seen it all this morning. The Lynchburg area, temperatures aren't going to rise very much, guys. We're only in the low to mid-30s, with some patches of drizzle still left over. But this is an area that we got to watch, especially by tomorrow, because Lynchburg and some surrounding counties under a winter storm warning tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Parts of the Lynchburg area could see a quarter of an inch of ice or slightly higher. So possibility for power outages there along with some icy roads. We'll break down ice totals with this next batch of winter weather that arrives tomorrow. It's coming up next on Virginia Today. Coming up on 642, the sweet love story between Virginia's longest married couple in your feel good Friday. Celebrating Black History Month, how a local group wants to honor the woman who helped create a foundation for black students and how you can pitch in. In the spirit of Valentine's Day, we've got a special love story for you during our Feel Good Friday that just happens to belong to Virginia's longest married couple. Last year, we introduced you to AJ and Lily Reeves of True Vine in Franklin County. And at the end of January, they celebrated 80 years of marriage. Just incredible. There was about a nine year age difference between the two and their family shared this sweet, funny video of AJ telling the story of how they met when they were just kids and what AJ said to Lily's mom. As I said to her, she'll have another pretty girl now, Miss Dora. She said, thank you. And it turned around to me, said, Jay, you gonna wait over her, ain't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no idea, but I think Miss Dora knew there. Just incredible. 80 years, and I have been keeping in touch with the family. And as we were working on getting this piece together, their granddaughter Valerie let me know that AJ, at 106 years old, actually passed away this week. And with the family's blessing, we wanted to go ahead and share this special milestone because they say this is a time they're taking to celebrate his long life and making it to his 80th wedding anniversary. Certainly thinking about the family this weekend, but they are right. The couple has two children, three grandchildren, 10 great grandchildren, and two great, great grandchildren. Big wow. family. Isn't that incredible? Such yeah. a legacy of love that they leave behind. Yeah. And you know, that's the generation too, where you see these long lasting marriages, mm -hmm. I, probably because they didn't have all the distractions. You had yes. a lot more family and togetherness time back and in And they the got day. married a lot earlier. They did. They were <laughs> young when they got married, but you know, they had long and happy marriages. Absolutely. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Well, thankfully, our storm system didn't last all that long, but it left a pretty decent impact for us. This from Cameron in Daleville, where you see a decent amount of snow, also some sleet in parts of Botetourt County overnight. The bulk of the more widespread stuff is moving out of the area. I do want to let you know there's a radar outage in uh, Blacksburg for the National Weather Service, so we're going to be missing that and kind of using a different what's called a composite radar where we feed off of other sites. So that's just something going on behind the scenes that presents a little bit of a challenge, but you you can see some freezing rain, some sleet still moving through parts of Southside, drizzle elsewhere, and that's going to be the case as we go through the rest of the day that we see some patches of drizzle and temperatures not really rising all that much. A lot of us between about 32 and 36 for daytime high, so cold end to the week, cold at night, temperatures upper 20s and lower 30s. That sets the stage for some more ice and some rain tomorrow. Winter storm warning for Lynchburg, Campbell, Appomattox, and Charlotte counties. That's for tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Most of the rest of us under a winter weather advisory, so lighter ice totals for the purple, higher for areas in the pink. In fact, as we can show you on our forecast map, about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of ice, especially near the spine of the Blue Ridge Parkway and heading into areas like Bedford, Lynchburg, Rustburg, areas like Appomattox, maybe northern Pennsylvania County and possibly areas like Rocky Mount as well. 
You head farther to the west, Roanoke, Salem, Blacksburg, areas like Pulaski, areas like Newcastle could see a glaze to a tenth of an inch. And also the case the farther south that you go as slightly warmer air starts to come in. And when I say warmer, I'm talking above freezing, not temperatures in the 50s or 60s. But here we are 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. You see the freezing rain starting out light, but still a nuisance, still a problem for us as we go toward about 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. There you see toward midday or so you start to see that green. That's your plain old cold rain closer to the North Carolina Virginia line and also closer to areas like I-77. This a general trend that's going to continue as we head deeper into the afternoon. So definitely looking at some icy roads. Possibility of some power outages, especially the farther east you go toward the US 29 corridor. So if you're around Lynchburg or Campbell counties, something you may want to plan for as we go through the day tomorrow. I think a lot of us should just stay put at times throughout the day Saturday. Also looking at some slick spots by Sunday morning for the New River Valley, although you're probably not looking at quite as much ice as our friends to the east of you. By Sunday afternoon, a few showers, Monday afternoon, a few showers with the possibility of freezing rain and rain returning by Tuesday of next week. High temperatures in the 40s after that for the Roanoke Valley 30s today and tomorrow. Again, we see that chance for some freezing rain and rain mixed in every now and then we're in the 40s Sunday afternoon. So any kind of precipitation if we do see any would be in the form of a cool rain. Same could be said for most of Monday and then by Monday night into Tuesday, watching at least the possibility of more wintry mixing going on later next week. Fingers crossed the pattern stays the way it is and we see calmer weather prevail by next weekend. Time now 650 the ice causing some problems on area roads. Let's get a check with Jenna. Yeah, we've been following some crashes. This one is still in Franklin County. You see the road is completely shut down there in that purple Virginia 122. The road is closed between Harmony School Road and Liberty Hall Lane. Uh, as we take a wider view, we're seeing a lot of yellow and red conditions from Bedford to the east there, Lynchburg, uh, lots of yellow and red. And then uh, in Floyd, 221, lots of yellow and red conditions there. So uh, if you have to travel, give yourself some extra time this morning and take it slow on the roads. The Virginia General Assembly has scrapped waterway access fees, at least for now. They were supposed to begin in July. Some said the fee would have, been, uh, have created issues for outfitters and other businesses on Commonwealth waterways. The law would have created a one time access fee for many canoers, kayakers and tubers. The state budget includes an amendment to delay that fee until July of next year. A Bedford County alumni group is kicking off a fundraising campaign to honor a woman they call the Foundation of Education for black students. The group wants to raise $70,000 to recognize Susie G. Gibson. She was the superintendent of Bedford County Black Schools when it was segregated. The money would go towards a historical street marker, signs outside the Science and Technology School, and more. She was considered to be the bridge of the liaison between the, the two races. It is recorded in the newspaper of those times that if you wanted anything done, you better talk to Susie Gibson. The Alumni Association hopes everything will be up by Memorial Day weekend. Coming up on 652, an update on road conditions from across Southwest Virginia as we continue here on Virginia Today. 655, here's a look at five things you need to know. It's day four, the historic impeachment trial of former President Trump. Today, Trump's legal team lays out its case for exonerating the former president of inciting the January 6th riot at the Capitol. The trial will continue around noon today. You can watch it live here on WSLS 10. Just hours after CVS opened its vaccination availability yesterday, spots filled up for all nine local locations. Today, those who did get a spot will begin to get their first dose. CVS says once more vaccines are available, they'll open more appointments. The CDC is expected to release its guidance on the best way to safely reopen more schools today. It's expected to outline five key strategies, hand washing, masking, social distancing, cleaning and ventilation, as well as contact tracing, isolation and quarantine. I'm Tosh Simmons. I've been keeping an eye on the roads all day because winter weather has taken a hold on us. Currently, we are in Clifton Forge going into downtown Clifton Forge, but we have been 
keep an eye on everything coming up here, whether it's Roanoke, Bata County, Rockbridge County, seeing what has happened. We've seen a lot of snow, uh, snow up here. We've seen ice all around. You're seeing at least one tractor trailer veer off of the road around uh, mile marker 170 um, around Rockbridge, Bata County. And con the conditions are still wintry. The conditions are still something to take hazard of. So be careful. All right, Taj, thank you very much. And you be careful out there as well. Also want to let you know Lynchburg Public Works is cautioning people to stay off the roads as we're still dealing with some drizzle, some freezing drizzle, even into the afternoon. Then by tomorrow, keeping an eye on freezing rain and rain redeveloping. We've got all you need to know right now on WSLS.com. Updates every half hour throughout the Today Show and a Facebook Live coming up today around 8 o'clock. And we are pulling out our Rick faces this morning <laughs> because a very special member of the 10 News family is retiring today. This is Rick Mull, our beloved news director. We love you so much and want to wish you a happy retirement. And we are going to put these all over the station when you're gone. We so are. we'll remember you. Have a great day. <laughs>